Hey there guys, welcome back to Arsenal Fan TV. This is the review of Arsenal's thrilling 3-3 draw with West Ham United at the bowling ground, our final ever game at Upton Park. And it was an entertaining game to say the very least for the neutral fan, but as an Arsenal fan, as always, I'm left the game with quite a lot of disappointment under my belt. It's horrible to think that this has effectively ended our title race, especially when we had a 2-0 lead almost at half-time. It's so unbelievably frustrating that we've thrown this game away. We've thrown away what was a very late title surge. I mean, if you want to regard it in that aspect. And we've got nothing left to play for this season. Remarkable to think that in the space of a month, we've gone from title contenders being within two points of Leicester off that whole... <laughs> That, that, that win against Leicester, the 2-1 win, all for nothing. The celebrations after that game, Danny Welbeck, last minute winner. Two points, six games ago. That's how close we were to being uh, up, up there with Leicester. Now tomorrow, we could effectively, effectively be 13 points behind him if they beat Sunderland away from home. The title is, is, is completely and utterly gone. But the fact that we're 13, we could be 13 points behind him after being within two points behind him six games ago... Where the hell did it go, go so wrong? And since then, we've gone out of the FA Cup at home to Watford, um, lost to Barcelona, we've been humbled by them, and we've got nothing left to play for this season. The only thing that we've got to motivate us in any capacity is to finish above Tottenham Hotspur and to get Jack Wilshere back to full fitness. whoop de doo I'll try not to get too excited about that. It really is depressing in a way, knowing that this is the best chance we're ever going to get to win the Barclays Premier League, was the best chance we were ever going to have to win the Barclays Premier League. Chelsea have been appalling this season. United are in a state of, uh, in a state of turmoil. Um, Manchester City have been well below par this season. And the only teams above us are Leicester and Spurs. Two teams that you know, I wouldn't even have considered being in a title race last season. It is unbelievable how poor we've been over this campaign. It's embarrassing to say the very, very least. We are an absolute embarrassment to English football. It is a real... I, I can't put it into words. But getting it to the matter of hand, today's game went 2-0 up. And uh, that's the most... The frustrating thing about this is that it was all going so well. We were having the rub of the green. We were playing some really good football. Admittedly, West Ham will feel hard done by because Lanzini scored a perfectly good goal, which was ruled out for offside. But swings and roundabouts. I mean, the amount of um, wrong calls we've had go against us this season. Think back to Aaron Ramsey's perfectly good goal against Liverpool earlier on in the season, right at the start of the campaign. That was ruled out. Unfortunately, it didn't go in favour of West Ham, and they did have a, a decision that w went against them. But we took advantage of that not too long after. Alex Awobi playing in Mazza Ozil in the World Cup winner slotted coolly past Adrian to make it 1-0. Things were going very well at that point. We were holding our own in defence. We weren't having letting Andy Carroll have too many chances. We were keeping West Ham at bay and we got a goal that I felt we rightly deserved. And then not too long after that, Awobi plays a wonderful ball into Alexis Sanchez, completely cut the West Ham defence apart. Sanchez took it really well on his right foot, um, playing it past Adrian to make it 2-0. Things were going really, really, really well. We looked so good on the counter. We were taking advantage of West Ham's three men at the back and we were playing some really good football. The defence was holding it so in the midfield was working really well but with uh, Coughlin and El Nene we were all linking up uh, with each other really well. El Nene and Ozil were actually playing some really good interplay and it was a very exciting Arsenal first half performance up until about five minutes to go to half time where it all went wrong. Andy Carroll with a bullet header past David Ospina. You can't help but feel it was always going to happen given that Bilic has obviously taken a look at our defence. He's seen that we don't have a lot of height in there without Per Mertzaka. We're playing Gabriel and Koscielny. Gabriel I thought really struggled today as did Laurent Koscielny at times. It was a wonderful header by Andy Carroll to make it 2-1 and then very shortly after makes it 2-2 and we absolutely capitulate. We cannot play when the pressure is on us and it's just it's just an epitome of why we're never going to win the league in the next five to ten years I mean we need serious a serious revamp at this club but that was a fairly decent goal by Andy Carroll to say at least Gabriel very poor in, in this instance turning his back on Carroll to try and block the shot he's never ever going to block it if he's not looking the right way but Carroll deflected it off him into the back of net to make it 2-2 just before half time the momentum was all with West Ham that followed through in, out into the second half Bilic changed up a little bit by moving to a four at the back, moving uh, Antonio over to that right back position, playing Creswell in the left back position, and then having uh, Reed and Ogbonna at the back. So it was going to be a little bit more difficult to penetrate them. And they got a third goal through Andy Carroll, typically awful defending once again. He was really taking advantage of us not having any heights in and around the penalty area. And you've got to question why Petr Cech didn't start this match. He's fully fit. He's our best goalkeeper. In fact, he's one of our best players by some distance. And he... <laughs> He's fully fit and you're not starting him. It makes no sense whatsoever. And David Ospina, yes, I'll give him loads of credit. I won't discredit him at all because he's been superb when he's come back. But when they're playing Andy Carroll, we need some height in there. We had no height 
with our defence. I mean, there are so many problems with our back line. It's evidence today that we need to invest in the centre half over the summer. I do feel this was a game that was moulded for Pam Mertzacker, but I mean, Mertzacker and Gabriel, I mean, it's choosing like how you'd rather die. It's, I mean, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I mean, we do need to invest in a new centre half over the summer. Someone elite to partner Lauren Kishoni. We just need an upgrade in that defensive department, and you could argue we need upgrades all around the pitch because there are evident problems uh, lingering throughout this Arsenal team. And we did manage to claw a goal back to make it 3 3 through uh, Lauren Kishoni, but it wasn't entirely convincing. It was good link up play from. Um, as a Ozil, Danny Welbeck with a, I don't think he actually meant, meant to assist Koscielny in this instance, but it falls kindly to Koscielny who put it past Adrian. Wonderful finish for the centre half, the Arsenal captain on the day, but it wasn't enough. Um, we did have very few chances uh, beyond that point, to, to be fair. I mean, we didn't really have many clear cut opportunities. We introduced a lot of attackers, Aaron Ramsey came on. Um, you could tell he's just coming back from injury. You know, it's saying he did kind of look his usual self, didn't have much of an impact on the game, made a few good challenges, but didn't really offer much going forwards. Um, Fio Walker came on, the less said about him, the better. Uh, and uh, that was pretty much it. I'm amazed to see that Joel Campbell was omitted from the squad, considering that he's been superb every time he's played for us. I do feel sorry for him. And I'm amazed that Joel Campbell isn't even getting in the team above you know, Walcott. It's astounding that Joel Campbell isn't getting minutes above Fair Walker because Campbell's done nothing wrong and he's got a lot to offer his Arsenal side. But 3 3, 10 points behind league leaders, Leicester, probably going to be 13 tomorrow. I'm embarrassed to be an Arsenal fan today. Please do get your thoughts on the game in the comments box below. Please do drop a like on this video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV. And as always, I'll be speaking to you very, very soon.